on Alabama Tonight. Right now, bashing the SEC. Wait till you hear what Ohio State's president had to say about SEC fans. Plus, what can we expect from the SEC this year? I talk with SEC Commissioner Mike Slive about possible changes and the SEC network. And it's all mental. We take a look at the mental side of golf in our tea time segment. That and more right now on Alabama Tonight. From Alabama's 13, this is Alabama Tonight. Hello and welcome to Alabama Tonight. I'm Kyle Berger. Don Hollis has the night off. First up, Ohio State's president seems to have a few words for the SEC. A reporter asked Gordon G about SEC fans saying that the Big Ten can't count because they now have 12 schools. This is what G had to say about it. Quote, you tell the SEC when they can learn to read and write, then they can figure out what we're doing. Ohio State has placed G on a remediation plan. G apologized saying his comments saying, quote, they were a poor attempt at humor and entirely inappropriate. So what do you think about what Ohio State's president had to say? Go to Alabama Tonight's Facebook page or Twitter and share your comments. We may have a few of those at the end of our show. The SEC spring meetings are going on in Destin this week. Nick Saban was asked who was the most dominant player in the SEC. His answer, Jadavian Clowney. It's our AlabamaChannel.com update. Alabama hasn't faced Clowney since he signed with South Carolina in 2011. Clowney had the Crimson Tide in his final two before he announced to commit to South Carolina. This is what Saban had to say about Clowney, quote, he plays a position where you can disrupt the game and he certainly does that extremely well. It was no surprise to me. We thought he was the best player in the country and was going to be this kind of player, unquote. Clowney is expected to be the number one draft pick in the NFL. Another big topic at the spring meetings, adding a ninth SEC game. I had a chance to talk with John Solomon with AL.com about that and more taking place at the meetings in Destin. Joining me now is John Solomon with AL.com. He's in Destin, Florida, covering the SEC spring meetings. John, appreciate you cutting into your beach time to join us. Uh, thanks for having me. Not much beach time. It's lobby time. <laughs> well, first of all, let's talk about the raging debate of the SEC scheduling. Coaches voted 13-1 to 1 to keep an eight-game schedule. Nick Saban, the only coach to hold out for nine games. Now, with the landscape of college football, is a nine-game schedule inevitable? I happen to think it is inevitable, um, but they're, they're not at that point at this point. Uh, there are some coaches, some ADs who do feel they're going to get to that point, um, but right now it's 13-1, it's to 1, at least from the coaches, to keep eight conference games. Now the ADs and presidents get to weigh in as well, and there's a separate argument as well about whether to keep permanent cross-divisional opponents, such as Alabama, Tennessee, Auburn, Georgia, or to do away with that and, and go to a more rotating basis. And that was another question I was going to ask you. If they do keep the eight games, that future, that cross-division opponent is in question. LSU is a good point. They fl play Florida every year. They're looking for more equal cross-division rival. Is that kind of in the works, kind of balance it out with that? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a huge, that's a very big discussion point. I mean, you don't know exactly how it's going to play out, and it's a legitimate point. I mean, LSU is right that they play Florida every year, whereas Alabama, you know, plays Tennessee every year, and Tennessee is really down. On the other hand, uh, the SEC has shown that things are very cyclical. That was Tennessee has been down for, you know, maybe five, six, seven years all time, though. Uh, Tennessee has the second best winning percentage in, in the SEC right behind Alabama. So you have to balance it out, I think, a little bit and look at some historical data as well. And uh, how much influence do you think the SEC network has with scheduling games coming up here? Now, ESPN and the SEC will, will say none. They, the ESPN will say that they're not going to offer their, their point of view at all. Um, you've got to think that, that, that there's a, a role in there, that there's a factor in there, because you know, the more inventory, the more options that the SEC network has, the more it can potentially sell, the more they could have high-profile games such as you know, Alabama, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, more frequently, as opposed to you know, perhaps only twice over a 12-year period. Now, with the uh, bump to nine games with what Saban wants to do, it increases the strength of schedule. When the uh, college football playoff comes into play here in next year with four teams making it, how big of an impact could that have if SEC is still locked in eight games? Well, that's what people don't know, you know, and it's, it's an unknown, and the SEC in some ways is also waiting to see, you know, what the selection committee is going to look like, who's going to be on the committee, what's the specific criteria that they're going to be charged with. 
uh, you, you know, who, what are the backgrounds of these people? What, what are their potential biases or non-biases? But the big question for the SEC is, can you get a second team into the, that four-team playoff in, in some years or, or most years? You, you figure they're probably going to get a one, you know, every year. But can you get that second? And that's something they have to weigh. It could be viewed negatively against them having eight games. It, it could actually be a positive, depending on how things play out. And the other argument is you play eight games right now, but the top two teams get that SEC championship game, which is the ninth game. And typically that's the top five opponent as well. Has that been talked about that basically you already have nine games for the two best teams? Yeah, I mean, you know, Mike, Mike's last point is that, you know, he wants a committee where they would take a Georgia last year in the playoff after the way Georgia played Alabama down to the wire. Now, you know, for instance, the Big 12 doesn't have a Big 12 championship game. So they're playing just nine conference games. Uh, the top two SEC teams are playing, you know, uh, uh, excuse me, the Big 12 plays nine, and the SEC would play eight plus their championship game. Uh, but it, it's not fully equal between conferences and conferences, so that is an issue. Howard, right, well, that was the big discussion uh, these past couple of days. What's been going on today? Anything big happening today down there? No, you know, you, presidents are meeting here today. Uh, they're, they're meeting at, the, at this point. Um, they'll, they'll meet again tomorrow and they'll vote on some issues. You know, one topic the, the SEC is looking at, and they've looked at this in the past, is having standardized drug testing policies across the board. Um, I'm not sure the exact details, but it could be in terms of uh, different punishment levels for different schools because schools have, have different punishment levels. Um, and so it's, there are some people who feel it's not fair competitively, where if you fail a drug test for the first time um, at one school, it's a different punishment than failing a drug test for the first time at a different school. All right, good stuff. Thank you, John Solomon, AL.com. We appreciate your time today. Sure, thanks for having me. Take care. There's also a lot of talk in the meetings about the SEC network. It's set to launch in 2014. I had a chance to talk to the SEC Commissioner Mike Slive about what viewers can expect. We're with Commissioner Mike Slive. First of all, congratulations on the SEC ESPN deal. Talk about the impact of this deal. Thanks, Kyle. Well, it's going to give us an opportunity to showcase the SEC. It'll be the SEC all the time for everybody, 24-7, 365. And uh, it's going to allow us to showcase the great coaches and the great players we have in our league in a way in which you can't do you know, without having a dedicated network. And you'll have 1,000 live events a year, 45 college football games. How are those games going to be distributed through the network? Well, we'll play our games on uh, Saturday, you know, and then we'll have three windows. And we're, we're now able to use the middle window that was a CBS exclusive window. We're now going to use it with, the, with CBS and the channel. So we'll have three games every Saturday for 13 weeks during the football season on the channel. And if we have overflow, we'll use an overflow channel. We'll still play our two games on Thursday night, but it's but the, the key thing was to is to be able to televise in that window that was before just CBS. And with the big business that is college football and uh, not knowing the particulars on this deal, does it make it harder to not stipend players, pay players, anything like that? How well, that? I've been an advocate for several years now of making sure that we increase the scholarship to the full cost of attendance. And I actually have been frustrated by the delay through the NCAA process and talked about that last week in Birmingham when I talked with the sports editors. So we've always wanted to make sure that our student athletes get the full cost of attendance and we're still, we're still working hard to make that happen. And the college football playoff has come in 2014. Uh, how is scheduling going to work? Are you maybe go to a nine-team nine conference schedule? Well, we're going to have to look at our scheduling. Um, I, I said today that I'm open-minded on it. Our, our league overwhelmingly voted to have 6-1-1. In other words, one permanent, one rotator in the other division. Um, and, but we'll have some discussion. There, there, there are people who want to talk about nine games. There's a question of whether you continue the rotation. Um, but we'll, uh, in light of the playoff and the importance of non-conference training, the schedule. Uh, we'll, we'll look at it. Uh, we'll, whether we'll make change or not is, is yet to be seen. And the Cotton Bowl and Chick-fil-A Bowl have always been associated with SEC Bowls. Right. They've been talked about as being sites for the college football playoff. They are now. W what's are. going to happen? Well, we'll we, we have uh, two bowls in mind. Uh, to, to take their place. And we actually, we're deep in discussion. The last two days here, uh, we met with our various bowl partners and had a lot of discussions. And we'll focus in on this. And now that we've got this channel announced, we'll focus in on our bowls. 
And uh, with the addition of A&M in Missouri last year, uh, any new changes come on, on with the network? You know, there's 14 teams. You happy with 14 realignment? Anything else? You know, I th I'm, I'm, it's my hope that we're that we that we've begun to stabilize. You know, I think 14 is an, is a number we can manage, and uh, certainly expansion is not a front burner issue for us. Well, what do you think about the SEC network? Do you think it's a good idea? Give us your thoughts now on Twitter and Facebook. We'll share your answers throughout the show. Just search Alabama tonight. Gus Malzahn voted to keep the conference games at eight. He's also in favor of keeping the Deep South's oldest rivalry. It's our AuburnChannel.com update. The Deep South's oldest rivalry started in 1892 and has been played almost every year since then. We told you yesterday about Mark Richt wanting to keep the rivalry. Here's what Gus Malzahn had to say about the Georgia-Auburn game. Quote, that's very important. One of the oldest rivalries in football. It's important to our fans. It's important to our players and coaches. Starting June 14th, you can buy your tickets to Auburn football games. The Tigers are pushing that it's a new day at Auburn this season. This year, the Tigers will host Georgia and Alabama at home. The SWAC football championship is leaving Birmingham. It's been played in the Magic City since 1999. The championship is being moved to Houston for the next three seasons. The game will be played at Reliance Stadium, home of the Houston Texans. It will take place on December 7th, also moving the basketball tournament from Dallas to Houston. Well, 900, that's a near impossible number for a bowler, but a local man came close. Coming up, I talk with the state's top bowler in tonight's Burger Bite. But first, it's Thursday, so it's tea time. Tom Anino talks to a local sports psychologist to monitor brain waves and then has some tips to help you become a better putter. You're watching Alabama Tonight. Today's top story on AuburnChannel.com is sponsored by Alpha Insurance. Appreciate it. This you is a lot it. of fun. Tom Anino, thank you. Well, the Brunswick Riverview Lanes in Birmingham is home to two of the best bowlers in the state. Just this month, the women's and men's state records were both broken in that bowling alley. The men's champ, Paul Ely, is the subject of our tonight's Burger Bite. Paul Ely is the kingpin of bowlers in the state of Alabama. Ely recently broke the city and state records with a score of 896 out of a possible 900. Every bowler's dream is to shoot a 900, so to get that close is pretty uh, pretty incredible. Ely's son, Kenny, is proud of his dad, but Kenny's friends think that high of score is too good to be true. They don't, I, I've told them stories, but they don't believe me. They don't believe it? No. How do they not believe it? Paul says he could credit his high school geometry teacher for his bowling game because, as he says, it's more than just throwing the ball down the lane. There's a lot of math and science involved in this game. Were you good at geometry in high school? Uh, I was. I was pretty good with numbers and angles and stuff like that. So, yeah, I did all right. If you want to be good at it, there's a lot of technology behind it. The 41-year-old construction company equipment manager knew that bowling was right up his alley ever since he was seven years old. You don't have to sit on the bench if you're not good so everybody gets an equal turn and I just love it the fellowship getting out here with your friends and it's I think I think bowling's a great sport 300 is a perfect game Paul has done that 61 times and the fact that he bowls almost every day that number will be on the rise I'm Kyle Berger and that's a burger bite if you have an idea for a burger, but something a little different out of the box, shoot me an email at kburger at wvtm.com. Wide right, the words that haunt Florida State fans. Coming up, we continue our countdown to college football season and take a look back at that classic kick that cost Florida State a chance at a national title. You're watching Alabama Tonight. Alabama Tonight's Play of the Day is sponsored by Little Caesars, home of the hot and ready pizza. I love that pizza. Our play of the day comes from the NHL playoffs. Blackhawks take it on the Red Wings in game seven, tied at one in OT. Blackhawks' Brent Seabrook goes in for the win. Blackhawks, check it out, advance to play the LA Kings in the Western Conference Finals. And that is our play of the day. A little hockey in this show, always a good day. Well, you never know what the next headline is going to be when it comes to less miles. The Mad Hatter. Here's a picture from today. Miles getting ready to rappel down a 24 story building in downtown Baton Rouge to support Over the Edge for adoption. What's next for Miles? 
who knows? We're getting close to the weekend. Let's get a check of your forecast with Jerry Tracy. Jerry. Hey, Kyle. Right now across the area, mainly rain free conditions. You're looking at interceptor radar, the exception being a few small showers in Pickens County, but most of us are going to have rain free weather tonight. It's going to be a warm evening and a fairly muggy evening outside too. As we look elsewhere, we do find some showers showing up well to our north and west, but they're not going to be a factor here for a while. <laughs> this map keeps doing this to me today. I'm not sure why in any event. I was going to show this to indicate that we're humid now. By the time we get to late Sunday night and Monday, the humidity should start dropping just a little bit. So I think we're moving in the right direction in that regard. All right, for this evening, then 80 degrees at 7, 76 at 9, 74 degrees by 11 o'clock. A warm evening, a humid evening for most of us rain free. These showers overdone on this model going away, but I think a few more will develop tomorrow like shown here. We'll have much more at 10 o'clock. Kyle. Thanks, Jerry. We're now 91 days until the kickoff of college football. As we go to break, we'll take you back to 1991. Number one Florida State taking on number two Miami. Here's your football fix. This will be a 34-yard try, and this is for a win. This could be for a national championship. It's up. Welcome back to Alabama tonight. Throughout the show, we've been asking you what you think about Ohio State President Gordon G saying the SEC can't read or write. Here's what you're saying. Charity Chatty Freeman had this to say, quote, be afraid, be very afraid. Well, be sure to join the conversation with us. Just search Alabama tonight on Facebook and Twitter. Well, that's going to do it for us tonight. Tomorrow, we continue to talk football as we hear from Nick Saban, Gus Malzahn. We also get the latest from the SEC spring football meetings. And we're talking about the region's tradition with Matthew Dent. Be sure to join Alabama tonight, tomorrow, right here, 6.30. Have a